And then we moved from sunny California to the main streets of Easton, Pennsylvania, where Zipper answers. <laughs> it was a bit, Zipper. We're not doing Jeopardy, please hold. For the love of Trevick, enough with the answers. I'm accounting them to the three-question limit from now on. Uh, hi, Matt. Happy New Year to you and your family. May we all be blessed with an even better 2024. And I'll second that emotion. Uh, my question and answer for Dave. Hi, Dave. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you and uh, and Grace and, uh, and the kids and the cats. Uh, my answer for this month is... Chick, see, uh, I, I don't think it's Chick Stone, but all comic fans um, say Chick Stone. If you if you're looking at that name, you would go Chick Stone, right? That's how I always thought it was. It's not. It's Chic. Uh, Chick Stone would be C H I C K. Uh, I'm pretty much sh sure that the same thing was true. With, uh, with the creator of the Blondie comic strip, who was chic young, not chick young. Because it was, it was of that time period where it meant uh, smart and fashionable. It actually, I think it's, it's one of those things from the 1920s, on the jazz age, where uh, there was chic and chic. There was uh, chic as in fashionable flappers and chic S H E I K, which was you know Rudolph Valentino. Um, Let me take you with me to kind of the Casba uh, kind of thing, and uh, so the the answer for this much for this month is uh, is Chick Stone or Chic Stone, and uh, I, I'm not even going to try and come up with a question for that because I think that's as interesting as I can be on the on the subject of, uh, of Chic Stone. Uh, my question for this month is my three best guesses on who you might be collaborating, collaborating with in 2024 in no particular order are one, uh, Martin Wagner Hepcat. Uh, no. Uh, Eric Larson, Savage Dragon. Uh, no. Uh, Matt Wagner, Rendell. Uh, no. Am I close? Uh, Michael R. Uh, <laughs> and you wrote, uh, no, Dave's collaborating with Chick Stone. Uh, is Chick Stone dead? Okay, the fear of us in hell uh, with a question mark team is collaborating with Chick Stone by a Ouija board hooked up to a Commodore 64 and an Etch-A-Sketch. It's pretty radical if you've never seen the 1985 film Weird Science. Is that actually in the 1985 film, Weird Science? In Weird Science, they hook up a supercomputer to... They, they hack into a supercomputer and use the memory processing to turn a Barbie doll into a woman, and they, they do that by hooking her up with... hooking the Barbie doll up with alligator clips that's connected to a game of operation. <laughs> okay. I, uh... Never saw it. And, oh, you uh, missed out, Dave. You would have liked Weird Science because, if I remember right, the woman that played—I forget the actress's name—but she was really hot. And when she first shows up, she's wearing a cut-off T-shirt and a pair of panties, and that's it. Mm, okay. Nineteen eighty-five. Yeah, Dave would have loved it. <laughs> that's uh, that's the stuff that uh, that uh, Ramadan Dave doesn't doesn't let him see let himself see anymore, <laughs> except in in very peculiar circumstances like uh, uh, Jeff Catherine Jones uh, Idol strips, where I go, uh, yeah. In one sense, I really shouldn't be looking at these, and in another sense, it's Jeff Jones Idol. It's uh, I, I I just I just never never. Could, uh, could come up with that. But back to Michael R., um, you're not going to guess it. I, I don't think uh, uh, you're going to guess who it is. Uh, I would never have guessed. Uh, I did know the name. I knew the creator's name, and I knew the uh, intellectual property name. Uh, 
Uh, but I had no idea that it, it went it went back that far. It's like, man, oh man, just uh, complete embarrassment on on my part. So, uh, and uh, Roly just left me a message that uh, I heard from this uh, from this individual, and uh, in in addition to the uh, to the crossover, which I think is still happening, and and the process uh, uh, to this point. Uh, has been um, that uh, uh, he sent me an outline for the story, basically just uh, typing out in short point form. Uh, here's here's uh, where um, uh, my intellectual property uh, intersects with uh, um, Cerebus between issues two and three. And because it was a Word document, and uh, he emailed it to Rolly, and I uh, downloaded it into my laptop, and I just uh, did the same typeface that he was doing, but put it in boldface and just uh, interjected. Um, okay, here's here's uh, plot points that I think uh, you have to cover so that we can uh, make this a canonical um, crossover uh, with Cerebus. And even, uh, Rolly emailed that back to him. And uh, I got a, uh, uh, another color image uh, that, that he had done. Uh, so I now have two color images from the crossover. And I'm just waiting to go, uh, at what point can I let uh, Manly Matt now, Matt now know about this and say, here's, here's the images, uh, post them. Uh, and uh, he, he had sent an email going, "Am I interested in Cerebus figures?" And uh, he's got he's got uh, his own connections for Cerebus figures. Uh, no arm, no foul. If I go, uh, no, not interested. Uh, no arm, no foul. If I go, uh, yeah, let's let's talk about this. So uh, uh, I'm definitely leaning more in the latter direction than the former direction. It's, uh, I'm not a, I'm not an action figures type, but I know, uh, at least all of the, uh, please hold for Dave Sim folks <laughs> would go, uh, yeah, I've been waiting for action figures for like 40 years. That is, uh, that is, that'd be great. I mean, I'm not going to say no, cause I'm not, right. I'm not that dumb. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, what the heck? It's, uh, it, it's, it's, it, it would be, it would be found revenue. It would be something where I would just have to say, yeah, I'll sign off on this. You know, you go ahead and just, uh, just send me the, the royalty checks on them. And, uh, that would, because it, it wouldn't be, uh, active involvement on my part, uh, that would qualify for a 25% royalty for Gerard. So I think, uh, Gerard would be, would be on board for that. Uh, and then we get an answer. Uh, Michael Grabowski commented on last month's Please Hold uh, Christmas Spectacular. Dear Dave and Matt, thank you for taking the time to address my question, and especially to Matt for the time I, it took you to upload the audio video just so I could find Dave's response quickly. You really do go that extra mile, don't you? I... There, there were, was a time, and I'm sure Dodger knows when exactly this was, since he listened to it, where I would just go, okay, here's two hours of video as, you know, and upload it to YouTube. And people said, well, could you break it up by topic because it's easier, you know, you know, to find what we're looking for. And, oh, yeah, I can do that. It's real easy. It's just, you know, the putting the images into the video that gets to be a headache. Because I start getting all Francis Ford Coppola of, hey, wait a minute, why don't I find this image of Jeff Jones and this image from Idol? And, you know, and all of a sudden it's a, hey, this should have took 28 minutes and it's like literally a day later and I'm still, you know, screwing around with part three. Yes, yes. The, it, that's, a, that's a danger for, for people like us, people like you. Your inner Francis Francis Ford Coppola that um, it's it's just not good enough for cover, government work. This has got to be exactly the way I see it in my head. Well, I've gotten smarter. I now have a folder labeled logos where I put 
images we use every I use every month and that folder gets moved to each please hold folder so like it's in the 1223 folder it's going to get moved to the 124 folder when I start making the videos so that I have all the Aardvark Van Anaheim logos, the Amok logos, the Jeff Seiler memorial picture. Uh, there's also a folder that's got a bunch of... Because when you did the uh, the freebie list, I downloaded a bunch of pictures of people. Because, I, you know, as you said their name, I showed a picture or an image related to them from service. And that's in a folder. And I know that Idol's in there because that was... Idol comes up just enough that I need, I have a couple idle images that, oh, okay, Dave's talking about idle, slot that in so I don't have to look for it. I'm getting smarter. Um, By the last one of these we ever do, it's going to be so slick and professional, and everybody's going to be like, oh, so next month, but they ain't going to be in next month. This is it. We're done. <laughs> as Kara Gar used to say, we'll, we'll just figure out how to do this, and issue 300 will, will be here. Well, and it's like that's 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 the way to, that's the way it works. I forgot to send it up through Raleigh, but last month when I did the whole Christmas spectacular intro, I I made that section of video, and it's only like a minute and a half, and I cut it to just that so I could send it to Raleigh so you could see it, and then I just got lazy and forgot to send it up because it's just an image of service. It's it's the service and how service from a couple of years ago where it's him in the Santa hat with the beard in the chimney, and I, at the time I made a two and a half hour video of him in the chimney with wind blowing sound effects and snow swirling around because at the time I'm like I'm gonna make a movie that's the same length as the latest Spider Man movie. And put it on the internet, and there's going to be somebody that watches all two and a half hours thinking that something else is going to happen. And no, there isn't. <laughs> but I had all the elements from that, so I, so that's the intro. And it, and then I, because I figured out how to do this in the video program, I can overlay text images. So it's, it's him in the chimney with the swirling snow my audio, and as I say each name of everyone that had a question and all the special guests, it pops up on the screen just like an, a mid-70s Christmas special. And I'm going, yeah, I'm actually a little proud of this, even though it took about an hour longer than it should have. Right, right. See, uh, then you could do the director's cut. Well, you do a four-hour version. It's, it's still the same thing. Absolutely nothing happens. But, uh, no, this is the director's cut. And to, for, for the folks that two and a half hours of this just isn't enough, here you go. I'm trying to remember. I did give service audio at the very end. Like, in the last 30 seconds, he says something. I can't remember what it was. If something along the lines of, service is stuck here, why are you watching this? <laughs> Okay, back to Michael Brovsky. Uh, for the record, I was serious about a remastered Melmoth because that's the one that I most wished was remastered during my reread last year. Uh, personally, I just want to see, own, and read a standard paperback trade edition someday. Uh, here, I hear what Dave is saying about his uh, Kickstarter timetable as well as uh, waiting on the remaining diamond and AV supply to sell out. Makes sense. Thanks again. Uh, yeah, we could um, try, try to meet you uh, halfway on this, Michael, because you're definitely a uh, um, um, first-tier uh, please hold for Dave Sim inmate um, so we, we, we do we do like to go go, go the extra mile. Um, some someday uh, Melmoth is uh, is going to need to be at least scanned and and remastered. Uh, but the scanning is the first process, and then uh, you know Roly does that. It's you know getting the the Melmoth original artwork from off-site and uh, um, bringing it to the to the off-white house uh, temporarily so that uh, Rolly can scan it 
at, uh, in Camp David, uh, there is a, a basic um, situation where, at the very least, I would be able to say, these are the Melmoth pages that uh, are still in the service archive. These are the scans that Rowley did. Uh, they haven't been remastered, and they haven't even really been tweaked. But uh, I will get uh, Studio Comics Press to print them out full size, however many pages that there are, and just charge you whatever it is that Studio Comics Press charges us to, uh, to print out a set. Uh, probably not on the cardstock that, uh, that we do the, uh, the can portfolios on, but on, you know, good, good slick paper that is going to show all of the detail. And then, uh, uh, however much it costs to print out a set, and however much it costs uh, Rolly to, uh, to scan them, and however much it costs to ship them to you, uh, there you go. It's not, uh, it's not uh, the remastered elements that you're looking for, but that's so far off in the future. Uh, that's definitely looking more like second administration. That's uh, uh, something that, that Eddie Kana will be doing, or maybe even third administration, which would be... Uh, whoever Eddie Conant's successor turns out to be. Because uh, <laughs> uh, Oscar Wilde Melmoth is just not what you want to call a, uh, a hot uh, uh, graphic novel commodity and probably probably never will be. But, it, it, you know, for, for somebody that uh, that's, 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 that's their favorite or the one that they would really like to see uh, the most detail on, uh, that's, that's as close as I can come to uh, meeting you halfway on that. So um, get back to us in time for the uh, February Please Hold, and we'll, we'll, we'll move this project along. Uh, and pseudo question made from real pseudo from Fernando H. Ramirez. I uh, was looking through my, quote, John, Bur John Byrne Marvel Classics Artifact Edition and noticed this on a page from Avengers issue 181. The issue is inked by Gene Day, who was a great friend of Dave. Gene apparently snuck in Dave's last name and Denny's first name on a couple of books in the background. Uh, not to mention his brother, too. Thought this was a neat Easter egg. And you're the guy that's going to turn it into a question going, did you know about this before today? And no, I didn't. And follow up. Uh, what do you think about it? And okay, so wrapping up, um, please hold for Dave, Sam. Where's my, where's my printout of that? There we are. Um, yeah, it was, uh, it was something that Gene did. Did reasonably often. Uh, Marvel was fine with it, and I think a lot of guys did that. If you got a bookcase in the background, just uh, put some put some names on the spine. Here's here's an inside joke. Um, the other name that's there is uh, Urslavis, which was uh, Joe Urslavis, and uh, uh, was the uh, the fellow who married uh, Gene Day's widow. Um, Gail Jack, and uh, <laughs> it's one of those. Uh, if if Gene Day found out that you were that interested in Gail, uh, it would have been worth your life. <laughs> and 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 you know that, Joe. But uh, um, as pretty much as uh, as soon as Gene was dead, uh, Joe went according and ended up. Mary and Gail, and they actually had uh, had two boys. Uh, two boys are probably about uh, guessing. I would say thirty five or forty years old now. I, I never, I never actually uh, actually met the boys. So um, Gene didn't know that he was uh, uh, pretty much drawing a roadmap of the future here, because uh, um, after. Uh, after Joe or Slavis and uh, Gail started keeping company at the house, uh, Dan was still there 
um, still still using the studio. So uh, we didn't know it, Gene, but uh, there you go. After, after you're dead, uh, it will be Dan Day and Joe Erslavis at uh, at the house on First Street. And the other thing I note is uh, there is Denny in the middle on the book, and on either side is Sim and the Bible. So, uh, okay, Gene Day didn't know that he was uh, he was forecasting the future, but uh, there you go. You, you 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 never know, and sometimes it takes uh, forty years of retrospect before you go, "Wow, that's that's pretty amazing that that would happen." So that'll do it for uh, Please Hold this time around. Thank you, Manly Matt Dow, and say hi to Paula, say hi to Bill Bullwinkle, and say hi to Janice Pearl for me. Thanks, Dave, as always. This is this is a pleasure. I mean, I, I'm not going to lie. When I was waiting for you to call, I'm like, oh, don't let this be one of them Dave Sim Will Eisner at the convention stories. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize for it looking that way. No, no, no. <laughs> it's it, it it's one of those where you know you know if I haven't gotten a fax for a week, I start thinking, huh? It's been pretty quiet, and I think, nah, you're just being paranoid. <laughs> right, right. Well, we'll uh, I mean we'll, we'll address that when uh, when we come to it as well. But meantime, you have a good night. You too, Dave. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.